Without further ado, we'll start. How about that? It always doesn't matter if one or two uh, are a little bit late, but um, welcome to our Tuesday afternoon uh, webinar. And today we're going to talk all about content marketing. So that's the that's the plan. Uh, the normal sort of rules apply. If you don't mind, we're going to uh, we we'll ask everybody uh, to uh, to mute. Uh, a microphone that'll be really helpful but please if you've got any questions just uh, put them up on the um on the chat line and more than happy to uh, more than happy to help so right what's first i know what's first let's let's master the power of of um of, of technology and share the screen i hope everybody can see that let's get this working let's is it working do that. That's right. I think so. Now, please feel free to put your uh, uh, look at me on the screen or whatever you wish to do. So that's what. Oh, actually, you know, I always say the same thing. Thank you very much. I know one or two of you have um, have survived this uh, session before. So purgatory for you. Or and today we're in. I'm in a different location. So yes, I've actually uh, I've moved to uh, to the West Wing. I'm in the West Wing today. Um, I've given the um, Given the butler and the innkeeper the afternoon off, I decided to to move to the West Wing. So we're in a slightly different location today. So please accept my apologies if you do hear some some background noise. It might be um, it might be uh, one of the team working on something. So there we go. Right, there we go. So what's going to happen today? Well, the, the, there is the chat line. Chat line's in place. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to raise. Uh, please feel free to do so. We are, I have to say this, this is the whole council. Uh, we are recording this, so it will be available afterwards. Uh, we'll, we'll edit out the bad bits. Uh, we'll, uh, on, on, a, um, on the whole council YouTube channel. But obviously, if your face is visible on screen, there's a likelihood you'll be on, on show. So if you wish to, uh, to change that, Please feel free to do so. I have to, I have to say that. So um, uh, that's the thing. You will get a copy of the slides. Yeah, you get a copy of the slides. Uh, that's my uh, client marketing. Simon Shepherd of client marketing. That's the Twitter handle. So uh, if you want to say anything nice, uh, I'll respond. If you don't, I'll, I'll delete you. Uh, so feel free to uh, to say anything uh, on Twitter. And I'll mention. For those of you who would like some uh, some bespoke help, we'll talk about that later. How does that sound? Actually, some good news as well. You know, I went I went to the council this week and they said um, they said uh, you know we like what you're doing in webinars, but you know can you make the jokes a bit more current? But I've actually been, been been working on that, so keep an eye out if there's anything that actually is semi current in the humour stakes. Right, what's up next, what's up next? I know what's up next, we, you know what we do every Tuesday afternoon. We don't, you don't just listen to this old bloke drone on. We're gonna have a quiz. Well, hey, quiz time. Yeah, this is all we do every Tuesday. Padding really, isn't it, until the main event comes on. A prize, as always, there is a prize if you get them all right. The prize, not even money can buy. A night out with me in Scunfold. There we go, that's the prize. As always, second prize is two nights. Let's move on. It's guess the slogan, the company slogan. Have you got your pens ready? No cheating. I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm watching. No cheating. So whose, which company's slogan was that? Yes. Right, you got the pen ready? And you can always shout it out, can't they? Yeah, because you're on mute. There you are. Come on, who's got that one? Budweiser. King of Beers. Now, next one, it was one hour one, right, next one. Who said that? Whoa, when you care enough to send the very best, who, which company's slogan was that? Ah, got you, have I? Well, maybe, yep, Hallmark, Hallmark. Didn't say it was gonna be easy, did I? Didn't say it was gonna be easy. Next up, who said, it wasn't yet, who said this? Well, he wasn't James Bond. <laughs> right, the diamond is forever. Who's that? Who's that? That war, which company was that? Ah, the beers. So, uh, 
That was number three. Number four, we try harder. <laughs> Which company? Any takers? You all get Avis. Number five, an easy one, this one. Be easy, getting easy, aren't they? It's the real thing. If only I could sing Coca-Cola. Yes, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Number six. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Impossible is nothing. Which company's slogan was that? You get this one? Uh, yes. Adidas or Adidas. I was always brought up to say it was Adidas, but never mind. Let's move swiftly along. Who, which companies? Keeping up the Germanic theme, he says, dropping a little hint. Which the which company was that? That was BMW. Yes. Question nine. The best a man can get. Which company was that? Any takers? Well, of course. It was Gillette. They were a cut above the rest. And whose slogan was that? Think different. Yes, of course, Apple. And everyone got all 10 right? Anyone got all 10 right? Let's have a little look on the chat line. And got 10 right. Let's have a little look. Oh, my goodness. Three, oh, three, four. I had put a tiebreaker in. Oh, four, Dean's got four, Liz got four, oh my goodness. The tiebreaker as well. Who, this was the tiebreaker question. Tuesdays, afternoons will never be the same again. Who said that? I did. Right, let's move swiftly along. So, can I ask one small favour? I'm not 100% sure which of our attendees is... Uh, got, but be kind enough to mute your microphones, if you don't mind. That would be a great help. Can everyone just quickly double check about the muting? So there can be some background interference. Okay. Are you sitting comfortably? Are you ready to roll? Content marketing, here we come. Normal rules apply. Fast paced, far away. Right. Inbound and outbound marketing is what we're going to talk about. Maybe you're going to talk about content marketing. I am. But I'll talk about these two things first because content marketing is a subset. So in effect, there are really two ways in which you can market your business. One is to be outbound, which, as it, as, it, as it says there, is any marketing where the company initiates the conversation and sends messages out to the audience, outbound. That's a push strategy. And they are typically four or five things there that would be indicative of outbound marketing as you can see i won't read them all but you can see we're actually making contact we're going out then there's inbound marketing it's marketing attracting customers by creating content and experiences that are tailored for them so that is a all strategy and here are typically some of the uh, methods and tactics you can use in terms of a full strategy. SEO retargeting, social media, we should look at those of you watching, that appeared in both categories, so yeah. But that's a full strategy, and you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, we have content marketing. So outbound, inbound, often it's called push versus pull marketing. Traditionally, a lot of marketing was push. You'd be pushing things out, you're making phone calls, you'd be advertising, you'd be direct mail. But obviously the world has changed slightly. So that is a little bit of a, of a scene setter. Inbound marketing is really all about three things. That we want to attract people, we want to engage people, and we want to delight them. It's that three-stage process. So ideally you're thinking it this way, that you'll be attracting strangers, but then they become, when you engage them, they become prospects, potentially move into being customers. And an ideal scenario is that they become promoters. So interact, engage, and delight. Strangers, prospects, customers, promoters. It's just known as the flywheel of inbound marketing. 
you've got to really think when you are posting your content wherever are you attracting people right Whew. that's the question how do you attract people how do you make it interesting engaging etc we'll come to this content marketing in a nutshell a bit of a boring slide this one but you know it's not but it's focused on creating and distributing valuable relevant and consistent content creating and distributing attracting and retaining an audience and ultimately you want the customer to do something interact engage right so the thing with in the post pandemic or current pandemic world that I would strongly recommend that you, you know, it's focused very much on educating and not irritating. It's not a softer sell, helpful content, and you're really keen to show your value in times of your crisis. So that the tone of your content marketing may well have changed since it's, it's all began. Right. Now, heavy slide. HubSpot created, did a, uh, a survey at the back end of last year, and you can see that the print primary forms of media within your content strategy, and you can see what's happened. And we'll focus on three or four of these today, but you can see that blogs and video, eBooks, uh, infographics are the key parts of a content strategy. And we're gonna cover these in a little bit more detail. Right another heavy slide this is a survey of american businesses but in it you don't need oh, i won't bore you by explaining it, except to say that the, the percentage of total marketing spend now is about 30 percent of all marketing and that you know they, they expect there'll be an increase in, mar, in in content marketing activity so here's the question why is content marketing important? There's the answer. It establishes your credibility, builds trust, strengthens your reputation, and is a great way of optimizing and promoting your website. You are building those items. Right. But importantly, you are building a brand. So the key benefits of doing content marketing are these that you will ideally increase audience retention your social media traction trust you'll generate leads you'll enhance the seo and you'll build authority so by pre presenting quality content in various different places you are going to achieve these aims, some of which are asked for by google which is, we'll come on to in a moment. Now, how many of you have considered this is a challenge? You know, and we've talked about what content marketing is, why it's important, and the obvious benefits. But how many of you have sat there thinking, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to talk about, blog about, write about? Ah. So we're sitting there like this. Oof. Right. This is how you do it. How to find topics to write about for your website. This is the places I would go, and the first port of call is usually in Google. So many of you will set up Google Alerts, and so you'll be actually bringing in content through, uh, through onto an email, which will arrive in your inbox. You can search for pretty much anything. You can then go onto Google Trends, see what is actually increasing in in uh, in activity and usage and then it's also you would make a natural google search pretty obvious but three google tools to use alerts trends and a straight search i would highly recommend in each case probably a long longer tail key uh, long tail keyword search if you're actually looking for a wider topic the second thing that you might wish to think about is to use Buzz Sumo, and Buzz Sumo will uh, is a is a is a great tool to use in many different aspects. But then you can see on by by interrogating that the posts 
to get the most shares. So you can see when people are blogging, which ones actually more Leeds United than Hull City, he says undiplomatically. Right, the next thing you might want to think about is thinking about Twitter. Now, Twitter is a great place for many ways, but there are a few things. You can follow journalists. You can see what they're talking about. If you type in the word blog into Twitter, it opens up a whole world. You, you can, the one of the beauties about Twitter is on your front page, your home page, you can see which topics are trending. And fantastic hashtag to use, journo request. You know, some type of an aside here, bit of an aside. You know, journalists sometimes have quiet news days. They're looking for content. Where do they go to find content? Hmm. Well, they may be looking for you as well as you looking for them. Hmm. There we go. Right. The key thing with any time you, uh, you create content is not to think of it from your perspective. What? What Simon saying here? Oh yes. You want to think about your 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 who are you aiming at? So you think about you building up in a simple sheet of paper these using these criteria about the type of people, the demographics, the characteristics, what you think their own needs are, the contents you're using. So, for example, if your target audience is say architect. Well, you might think what the demographic demographic an architect are, what they how they buy, what their needs are, their responsibilities, what they're thinking, feeling, the content that they're looking in the different magazines, etc. You would build up criteria relating to that. The key thing, of course, if you are aiming for architects, or you know architects, what I know I would do. Do you know what I would do? Yes, do you know what I would do? I know what I'd do. I would actually pick up the phone and talk to an architect. I would actually understand where they go. And what uh, in terms of content it's writing things from your perspective and, and uh, using market research so moving swiftly along today we're going to cover these four areas blogs videos infographics podcasts and little tip during the call today i might be able to show you how you can make a few pennies doing each and every one of these things so first and foremost blogs what is a blog well let me tell you you know it's a and let's not kill ourselves it's a time consuming activity i'm not going to pretend that you estimate to write a blog post will take you time now some of you might want to put the hang up right now but make some right words of a good length of time it's going to take you some time so there is an obvious and commitment but there'll be some considerable benefits now the key thing actually within a blog is this I'll leave it on the screen I don't intend to read it but images lists statistics quotes video audio all elements this isn't writing 500 to a thousand boring words this is about actually presenting information in an interesting exciting way which I will come on to in more detail he thinks statistically is that, as you can see there, 77% of internet users read blogs while they're online. Think about maybe your own behavior. Well, three out of four people are looking and reading articles. A recommendation from a blog, usually the same, 61% of consumers will lead to a purchase. And companies that publish blogs generate more website visitors and more links to their site. Let me read that again. Companies that publish blogs generate 55% more website visitors and 97% more inbound links to the site. It's probably the most important phrase I'll use this afternoon, answer the question about why you'd use a blog. How many of you want more traffic to your website? That's why you blog. Now, what are you going to blog about? I'm going to cover these in four areas. I'm going to show you some examples. Guides on how to use your product, 
how you can solve people's challenges, testimonials, promotions, discounts, events, etc. Going back into that buyer persona, thinking about gearing it around what people want. Some examples here of the companies, sorry, and this is, forgive me, showing my garden here. That's not my garden. My garden's got weeds in. So here, so my garden, this is a company, an American business called Riverpoolandspas.com. They're talking about swimming pools. Now, swim pools, you'd think, you know, there's the, the you know, um, sorry to do a deep dive on this subject, uh, but you can see swim pools may or may not be um, a, a major uh, issue for people. You think, what, what can you write about? But there is a heck of a lot you can, you can do. And there, look at the, what they're doing. Can you put an in ground pool in a small backyard? A great image. And there you are in terms of, so they're talking in the eyes of the customer about what. Uh, of what they can do with a swim pool in even the smallest of space. So, you know, for, it's, it's quite a big start. So some of you may find yourself, you know, in at the deep end with this type of blog. But there's a good example. If you move to um, some slightly different content, GoPro, far bigger business than rivers and pools, what are their blogs all about? Well, there are videos and, and, and activities showing people how to use a GoPro. Again, worthwhile checking out that particular website. And here's my favorite. Anything is Odin, my favorite. Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Look at their blog. Four summer milkshakes that will make your day. Great picture. And then you can see the other uh, articles on the right-hand side of the screen. It's so appetizing. So, you know, it's written around the customer, will make your day. So come on, punk, make my day. Right, so three examples there to look at. Going back to, I've shown, forgive me, I've shown this slide in a previous webinar. If you're struggling for headlines for your blog, you can go to coschedule.com. If you're looking for topics to write about, the HubSpot, and if you want to spice up your words, I could have done this during my own level English, go on to Grammarly.com. They're all great places to go. I know exactly what it's like sitting there on a Sunday morning with a blank sheet of paper saying, what am I going to write about? These are places you can go to get some help. Now, the key thing when you actually, oh, key, key being the word, key thing to do when you're writing your blog is to put key words in the blog. Again, I've shown this slide before. There's four places you would go to key, keyword tools to find the key words that you can actually include them in your content. Leave that up on the screen, and obviously you get a copy of that. Places to go to find keywords. And then with Woody and Buzz, you would put, you find scout traps and you put them everywhere. So you're putting the, the keywords into your content. So people will find it. So you've, you've written your blog, you've put in keywords. What do I do next? I know what to do next. Have a little drink. That's better. Can't beat vodka in the afternoons. Right. You make it visually appealing. As I mentioned, it's not, as you saw with Benny and Jerry's and the swimming pool example and GoPro, it's not just tired words. And here's a good example of a fashion site that are making the blog physically, a visit, a visit physically, visually appealing. Now, where do you post your blog? Well, time to absorb what's on the screen. First things first, you will put it on your website and you will make sure the URL is written with the keywords within it. You will post it on your Google My Business account where there is a space for a posting. For those of you who are on LinkedIn, you'll post it. How many people are thinking there saying, what does he mean by both accounts? What do I mean by both accounts? I know what I mean by both accounts. Your personal account as well as your company account. Or, you can just post it on your company account and then share it yourself. So there's a little tip there for that 
Facebook, you'll post it on your Facebook page, maybe on your individual page, any company page. You will also, if you're on, on the platform, consider using Twitter as a means of setting up a link to your website or to one of the other places. Medium, medium. Well, it's, you, know, you wonder what the word medium is doing there. It's quite rare that medium is there. But Medium is a great blogging platform. We'll come back to that. And Quora is another great place to go, with which are forums for blogs. And the thing to also mention is that if you're writing a blog, you may well send out your newsletters to your customers and actually link to it. So there's eight places to go. The key thing here is to remember you've created content once, taking you three hours or so to do it. And you've got eight places in which to place it. And that is how you generate links back to your website and how you get people to share it. So your website, you want traffic. I've mentioned before, Google Eat is critical. Google Eat stands for expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. How do you meet the Google algorithm of expertise, Authoritativeness, can I even say that? Trustworthiness. How do you do it? Well, I know how you do it. You write blogs. You write, get content up there, which displays these very things. So Google will rank you higher because of your, the, the user experience. You say you are an architect. You're writing as if you're an architect. And so you're perceived to be an expert in your field. So think that, that that's the power of content. The quick little tour through SEO. If you're writing blogs, what you would do then with the actual extra page you've created in WordPress, Wix, or wherever it is, you would actually change the page titles and the meta descriptions using keywords. You want to drive traffic to the blog. And so this becomes evergreen content. So what you'll do is this, from an SEO perspective, you'll change the page titles, the meta descriptions, the headers, the paragraph, the alt text, which is to name the images within your blog, and the body of content will all change with keywords within the blog. It's a great way of creating SEO. In simple terms, hopefully your blog becomes a landing page to drag traffic into your website. Make sense? Right. You can also, when you go onto Google, often you see on the first page something called a featured snippet, which is questions and answers. Somebody asks a question, and underneath it is an answer. The answer is a featured snippet on some company or organization's website, which is usually a blog. Or So you can actually get onto the First page of Google with a featured snippet by answering questions. Posing a question, answering it. So your blog could be geared around a QA. Okay. Don't worry, I don't want to go now. So what you'll do, as I mentioned, you'll put your blog on LinkedIn, you'll put your blog on Facebook. And the key thing in social media often is to share to groups, set up backlinks. So, for example, if you if you put your blog in LinkedIn, you will actually link back, set up links back to your website. One little tip is probably not to put the entire blog on LinkedIn, to put half of it or a tracy of it. You're in effect teasing the audience back to your website picture tells a thousand words so having great images and a great title is a way of actually harnessing things from a social media perspective in your content the other place to go as i mentioned is to use google my business so you can see clearly here on this on this kitchen sink you've got a place there that's a micro site and you can see the mouse there creating a post you can put your blog on Google My Business. And even then link, you can link back to your website. And again, you're just setting up natural SEO. 
So there's opportunity there. And all the time, Google are encouraging you to post there. This is the key thing. Now, this isn't me, Simon, pretending to be Charles Darwin. This is a contrived way of never missing an opportunity with missing links. One of the highest ranking factors for a website to get traffic to your website is to set up links to your site. The question I'm often asked, how do you set up links? Creating content and linking into your website, never miss an opportunity to create links. And I mentioned, if, you are, if you're creating good content, to post it in the likes of Medium or Quora are great places to go. Right. Everything about blogs covered in 10 minutes. The next thing, video. Now, video killed the radio star, according to the song. But video is growing incrementally, not if not astronomically. So creating video is also creating content. Some of you have breathed a sigh of relief because I said, I can't write five, six, seven hundred words. Well, we can all speak and we can all look, oh, we can all look good in front of a camera. We hope. The creating video. Now, I know how many are thinking, I can't do this. I can't talk to camera. Well, okay, you can, there's lots of clever ways of doing this. You can do a question answer. You can get a friend to talk to you. You can ask questions. You can do a product demonstration by just seeing your fingers. So you could have somebody, fill, if you have a product, having your fingers, sort of Richard Clayderman style, here, and people talking about your product. You don't have to be on screen. You know, does my hair look good and all this kind of stuff. I definitely understand that, but video is a great way of doing that. So that's it, type of video, a question answer, a product tutorial, and a how-to video, or you know, even a video streaming games. There's lots of different ways in which you can create interesting video. Now, there's lots of different ways of achieving this. And on the right, on the there at the top, there's various different mobile video editing apps. I can't confess, well, I can confess, uh, I've, I've only ever used Magisto, uh, but underneath there are others. Now I'm going to start a video right now. Woo, what's all this about? Well, this video was created in one hour. What? Only one hour? Yes, and it was using Microsoft PowerPoint, which is free. Well, so I'll leave this to run. Now, that isn't going to, that's not D.W. Griffith or Sergio Eisenstein. You know, this is a very elementary kind of video, but you know, you, that can all be created on, on oh, it's going to sound again. You can create video. You've all, probably everyone's got a smartphone. You can use likes of Magisto and other platforms, to create video, or you can use PowerPoint. Talking heads, however you wish, but that is indeed content. Okay. Next thing to think about so is infographics. Oh, oh, infographics. Well, infographics is what you see on the screen. This is a company that helps business to export. And what they're doing is visually representing what they do in an infographic. Don't write all these words when the eye, when the eye can see it so much easier by doing using infographics. So if they represent your message in an effective manner, far more attention grabbing and far more professional. See that? As opposed to writing about how they can help. The use of infographics, really powerful stuff. How, what do I use, Simon? Well, two that I have used, effects of Canva, CNVA, and PictoChart. You can create your own graphics. Three tools to use to create infographics so that you can use those on your social media or on your website. A great way of representing the business. Right, quickly done. So I've done video, infographics, blogging. What? Podcasts? What? Well, does everyone know what a podcast is? Well, basically, it's audio files that are created. Uh, and, and, and so it's engaging material that you know, people would download and listen to. 
how to start a podcast. What you do is these simple steps. You have a concept, you design some artwork, the brand, you record and edit your audio files, you find a place to host the files, and then in effect you get syndicated through an RSS feed, uh, feed and so you can get distributed through different platforms. What it is, microphone, clocky bits, off you go. Summarize it very simply, but podcasts is a great way of creating content. You can write, you can act, you can do infographics, and you can talk. One of the four options. I'm going to leave this on the screen for a little while. You can make, and you will get a copy of this. These are a number of places to go that, where you can actually create and host podcasts. Podcasts are growing. As you can see, the audience is expected to double and maybe reflecting and often an instrument of change for podcasts has been the length of the uh, our, our time in lockdown. People are downloading uh, uh, podcasts and listening to them. And people are sitting there with Alexa in the background. People are on journeys or listening, whatever, it, whatever it is, podcasts are a great way of creating content. Now, here are some options for you. I promised you this, make a few pennies from content marketing. So it isn't just about driving traffic to your website. There are other things with, particularly with podcasts, videos, and even blogs, less extent infographics, you can make money. You could get them, you could get your articles sponsored. You can actually have adverts running on your website and on your blogs. And I've just put up there Google AdSense and Midroll are places to go for that. Has anyone ever used any affiliate marketing? And so the likes of Amazon Associates. So you can set up links to Amazon and Amazon will pay you for the privilege. That's make money. You can also make money by creating premium content. You can give much for free. And then you can actually, people can pay for your content, which will happen. And also, you can find donations through the, that particular website. Businesses will actually encourage encouraging people to donate to actually uh, pay for your podcasts and the like. So five ways in which you can actually make money from content. Why do you, you know, look at all these YouTubers who are zillionaires? How do they make their money? Well, combination thereof. Finally, thinking about some of the things very simply that are really good content, and it's called snackable content. Quotations, <laughs> right? You know, with images there, you know, that come that you can be created through Canva and other platforms that will go on your uh, go on your uh, social media feed can be used there. M memes and gifs are all about creating engaging content. And so it comes under the banner of content marketing. So just the last few minutes is gonna cover some of the pros and cons of inbound and outbound marketing. With inbound marketing, the real advantages are it's unobtrusive. You're creating content from behind your desk or in the field, etc., and you are sharing and not selling. It's educational and it's relatively, if not inexpensive, to do. There are some considerable advantages. The disadvantages, I think, it were, uh, are outlined there. It doesn't always work in competitive markets. The audience has to do something to find it. And you end up with a possibility you can create demand for content and not necessarily product or service. You can be blogging about something, talking about something and not actually reaping the reward. So there's some honest advantages and disadvantages. Now, let's imagine for a moment we're all, we're a plumber. And what would we do in terms of a content marketing 
strategy. Oh, where's he going with this? Well, these are available and seen everywhere. You could create, if you are a plumber, tips on plumbing. So how to, whatever it is, how to, that can be done by video, by words. You can also create advice on summer or winter content. So like lagging your pipes or, you know, basic maintenance around there. You can demonstrate how things work. So you could be showing people how to do showers or et cetera, whatever it is. And then the also is to create, turn the video into words. You can create video, but there's software out there that can convert it into words. So it can become a blog as well. And then you could answer frequently asked questions and create a page on your website, which might be a blog. So even the most, what may be kind of more simplistic kind of business may turn into it can still run content and it don't have to be uh, IT literate or the most articulate individuals in the world because you just need to know what you're talking about be convincing have a friend to hold a phone and create great content now in whole or wherever are there are probably 50 plumbers or maybe 150 plumbers why should you choose one over another because one of the other plumbers might exude expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. How do you create that? You create it through content. So when, 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 when you go into one plumber's website or another, you may see a completely different perspective just by doing some very simple things that are time consuming, yes, but advantageous in terms of so many benefits. Oh. Three quarters of an hour. There we are. What's up next? Well, it's afternoon tea, as always. We've got, uh, if any of you would like to take advantage of the advice you've heard today, uh, marketing one-to-one, -one, just drop me a line and we can give you spoke, fully funded help that is available. You will also get a copy of these slides. And next week, hey, hey drum roll. What are we going to talk about next week? Well, we're going to talk about how to improve your sales. Well, hey, sales have changed. And obviously, with the likes of the lockdown, you can't go and see people. But what are you going to do in terms of sales? These are my contact details. You'll find me on Twitter, Client Marketing YKS, or by email, info at clientmarketing.co.uk. And I'm going to thank you for your help by leaving some information there as to the benefits and what you can get from registering for Grow My SME and to be a business under the uh, program. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to go to the chat line if I can find it. I can find the chat line. Where's the chat line? Let's have a little look. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Right, let me go down to the questions. From Liz, from Liz, should the content be changed slightly for each place you put the blog? I've been sharing my website blog as a LinkedIn article, but I've never heard, I've heard that Google doesn't like this. Great question. I think if you're writing content about something, you may wish to tweak it. Because, because remember, you're writing it through the eyes of the customer. So you could make a case that LinkedIn might be slightly different to Facebook. You might wish to tweak it slightly. I would do that. Bear in mind that LinkedIn is a, not a Google product. So if you're creating video and embedding it on YouTube and it's on it about being a Google product, that's advantageous. I would suggest tweaking. Right, from Elaine, could I ask for a copy of the video so I have an explanation of the slides after, please? You can get a copy of the business, yeah, of, of, the, uh, of the slides, and you ask for a little bit of one-to-one -one help, so more than happy. Pauline's asked, what does SEO stand for? Search Engine Optimization. Right, quick 30 seconds on this. Think of your website. Do you want a pretty website? Do you want a functional website? Or do you want people to find your website? Answer. Probably all three. 
for me, I think your website is all about traffic. So you're optimi you optimize your website, you get traffic into the site, visitors. The more visitors you get, the more Google likes you, the higher you up the rankings. Hope so. Elaine, what's your email? Too fast. <laughs> Sorry, I do speak fast. Info at client marketing. I'll also, I've got your email address. I'll, I, you'll get an email from me. So I hope that's okay. Nick, will there be a webinar after next week's session or is next week the last in the series? You know, this is like BBC Two. It goes on forever. This is a, here's the good news and the bad news. The good news is, or well, depends on your perspective, the good news is that I'm going to be here for every Tuesday. Hey, the bad news is I'm going to be here for every Tuesday. Now, do you want me to let you into a little secret? I don't think there's anyone from the council on it. I'll, I'll whisper it. If there is anyone from the council, I'll deny all knowledge of having said this. They want me to do two webinars a week. No. <laughs> what more can you say? Looking aside, we're looking to increase this. And what we're going to do is this. Here's a little bit. If you've got any suggestions about what you would like in terms of content, we'll cover this. The second thing is that we're going to offer webinars for, for one, uh, forgive me for using the wrong words, beginners or novices or people starting up a business and people at maybe a more advanced level. So hopefully we can tailor things because I realize I'm pitching it. Some people might be misunderstanding it because it's too advanced or might be dumbed down. But so we're going to aim it more at people, what I maybe, if I want a better expression, sort of novice and more advanced, O level and A level. So we're going to be running those webinars as well. And we will be repeating some of the content. I will try and repeat some of the jokes as well because I know I know they, they go down like a lead balloon, so I, I, I would like to have those. I hope that's answered that question. Let me just check if it's got any other questions there. No, what can I send you some money? No, I don't. That's okay. Thank you. Don't need that. Um, anything else? Anything else? Gosh, doesn't time fly by? Yeah, yeah. I was going to uh, give Mrs. Bridges the afternoon off, and I'm not sure if she's upstairs or downstairs, but she's around here somewhere. But um, Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to hang around for the next five minutes to take any questions. Anyone wants to chat with me, more than welcome. But if not, I bid you farewell. Thank you for listening. Same time next week. All about sales. Thank you. Hi, Simon. Hi, John. You're right. Yeah, I'm really good. Really good. You just, just a, real, a real quick one. You, you, yeah. you, touched on, you touched on there about how to attract the attention of journalists for free, yeah, yeah. free editorials. You just, just remind me what that hashtag was. I didn't write it down. Journal request. Journal request. And there's another one as well. I forgot here. If anyone's still listening, it's a good one. Help a reporter out is a website you can go to. Help a reporter out. Look at because they, they sometimes they're struggling for content. And they'll do searches looking. So if you're presenting really interesting stuff, you get picked up. And I, I'm, I know I've been working with a company that's making this special kind of antibacterial face shield. And they've been contacting local journalists who've been doing all their marketing for them. They've yeah. been writing articles about it. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. So, you know, they can be friends. They definitely can be friends. And it's an avenue that often people don't go down. And you can imagine how many followers journalists have. Yeah. Literally thousands. No, oh, great. Thanks for that. So, uh, yeah. So, is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, John. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Don't, don't stop telling the jokes either. They're, they're really cool. <laughs> you, you're, you're too kind. I've got to get more, I've got to get more current. I've got to get more current. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks a lot, John. Okay, Jill. Any more for any more? Hi, Sam, and it's Pauline again. Hi, Pauline. Hi. Good, good, good. Um, could you ask about something to be done on virtual exhibitions? 
I know it's a big subject yeah. and it's very new, but I am struggling to find anything at all. Um, Wikipedia stuff's really old and very sparse. Yeah. And it's going to be a big thing for me in the future, yeah. probably other people as well. I, how I they agree. work, what you do, how you prep for it, how you follow up on it as well. Because if we can't travel, that's going to be tough. Yeah, let me let me uh, broaden that out. Uh, uh, there's, there's, I wish I'd remember the name, but one of the latest trends with the, combined with e-commerce, I can't remember what it's called, oh, forgive me, I should know this, like a virtual experience. People will go shopping on e-commerce, but will have a virtual experience at the same time. So in effect, like trying try clothes on, makeup, etc. The technology is all around us. What's going to happen is that people will be doing demonstrations of products. And there's a one particular client I've got who's doing a similar thing. They, they, they do tennis lessons. And they do, believe it or not, they're doing tennis lessons over, over virtually. Wow. So for your particular area, you can demonstrate your product and, or service and do it in a particular cute and creative way. Now, one of the biggest challenges often is getting to see people, as we all know. So you can you can invite them to come along to see it. So that that is that is where I think the technology is heading us to do these kind of what you know these virtual uh, uh, sessions. So anything, even businesses that have taste, which obviously is a sensation you can't quite capture. I know Tom's on the on the call. You know they're getting around those issues with the virtual tastings of of alcohol and things like that. So you can get around so many different things. But yeah, happy to do that. I know people are, going, are probably not going to gather in person for a while. Yeah, yeah. That's my guess too. So especially for something like mine that's so expensive to transport and everything, yeah. if I can spend that money instead exactly. on a virtual exhibition, I, I, I don't know whether to set it up as a permanent site as well you, so you, people you, could... You can and you, can, you could you know, uh, keep the content there that people can log into so that they can see it. Now, you imagine the cost of going to Australia and the cost of going to Brazil and the cost of going to wherever. Well, you can do it all behind the armchair, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So I think harnessing the technology to move into these areas, is, it does require a lot of effort. It does require a lot of challenge to get people there. It's that question, will people give up half an hour to listen to you? Question. It has to be really enticing. It's a great way of trying to almost any product or any service maybe particularly mine because they've got to travel to go to sheffield exactly. and then they've got to spend an hour there out of politeness you can't spend much less and then travel back so that's a day gone for a yeah. lot of people yeah no that's fantastic suggestion really I've got, i'm gonna i'm gonna i've made a note and I, and I see it i know it's a trend in in e-commerce and a lot of businesses face the same challenge and we'll talk about it a little bit next week because you can't, I'm saying this word, you can't see customers. That's not why, sorry, we're kind of like difficult to see customers. They're reluctant to see you. How do we get to talk to them? How do we demonstrate what we're doing? How do we show people? And you talk, talked about a topic that's achievable by doing it well, using these methods. That sounds brilliant. And, and I could see the application internationally as well, because English being such a... Yeah. Know, Prominent it, language, it's, it's going to uh, be easy for us absolutely. guys. Absolutely. You can get around that, you know, and, and, and people can still see you any time of day kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe and, subtitle in a different language. Yeah, you might need to. Uh, certainly in some countries you might want, well, again, but a lot of stuff you can, again, that is clever because you can be talking and you can, you know, um, you see it in some places, particularly with people using, um, what do you call it, hand, um, sign language and also subtitles, different things. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Sorry to keep you, thanks very no, much. No, no, happy to help. Great for <laughs> Brilliant, look forward to next week. Okay, super. Cheers, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you, that was great. See you later. Yeah, cheers John, see you. Bye. Hey, the five of us now. Five us, thanks always. Yeah, thank you to Emma, to Nick, Dean, everybody there. Thank you, Danielle. Any more for any more? Any more? For, I'll draw, I will write to you, Elaine, because I know you put a little note there. I will write to you. 
Okay. Well, without further ado, I'm going to say au revoir. Thank you very much for listening. See you next week. See you next Tuesday. And goodbye to Elaine, Kate, and Kaylee.